Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can install Home Assistant on a Synology NAS. So Home Assistant is an open source software that basically allows you to centrally manage all of your home automation devices in a unified user interface. There are some really cool dashboards and automations that different users have been able to set up. And today we're going to take a look at how you can run this inside of Docker on your Synology NAS. So the setup instructions are relatively straightforward, but like a few of the other tutorials we've done in the past, the true setup is done after the actual application is set up. So you're going to have to go in and connect all of your devices and make sure that everything runs the way that you'd expect it to. So before we get started, I just want to say that I have full written instructions for all of this in the description of the video. So the first thing that you have to do is make sure that Docker is installed. And if you have Docker installed, it's going to create a Docker shared folder. Inside of that shared folder, you're going to have to create a subfolder named Home Assistant. And then inside of that folder, you're going to have to create another subfolder named config. This is basically where we're going to store all the configuration for our home assistant application. Now, if you ever wanted to move this in the future to a different device running Docker, you would basically take this configuration folder, you would port it over to whatever device is running Docker, you would then mount the same volume, and everything should function the exact same way that it does. So this is the folder that you want to make sure you back up because this is going to contain all of the Home Assistant uh, settings and configurations that you have. So once you do that, you can open up Docker and then you can download the latest Home Assistant forward slash home dash assistant image. It's going to take a little bit. The download as of the video is currently one gigabytes. So give it some time. And once it's done, you're going to be able to go to the image section and double click that image. And then that will create the container. So at that point, you can give it a name and then you can select advanced settings. At this next screen, we're going to select enable auto restart. This is basically just saying that every time your NAS restarts to automatically start this container. Once that's done, you can head over to the volume section and then you can select the config folder that we created a little earlier and you can mount it to the forward slash config mount path. So like I said earlier, this is mounting that forward slash config uh, containers folder to our config folder on our Synology NAS. So when you start the container, all of the contents of that forward slash config folder will automatically map to the config folder location you created. So like I said before, just make sure that you back up this folder. Once you're done with that, you can head over to the network section and then you can select use the same network as Docker host. This is basically just going to use the same network as your Synology NAS. Once that's done, you can go to the environment variable section and then you can create a new variable named TZ. This is for time zone and then you can enter in your current time zone. This is important because when you are actually using Home Assistant, you have to make sure that everything is in your local time. So if you don't specify it here, everything will most likely be off. So make sure that you specify this. Once that's done, you can select apply and then you can create the container. Now you're gonna have to give it a little bit, but you should be able to navigate to the IP address of your Synology NAS and port 8123. Now, if you're using Synology's firewall, which you should be, I'll leave a pop up for that now just so you can learn about that if you're interested. Uh, but you should be using Synology's firewall and you're going to have to create an allow rule for port 8123 to make sure that you can access the container. Now, once that's done and you navigate to the IP address and port 8123, you should get the main setup page for Home Assistant. So you're going to have to go in and create an account for Home Assistant and then it's going to ask you to select your local location. So it's going to have a little map you can go through and you can pinpoint your exact location. And then you can determine if you'd like to share any anonymous information with the creators of Home Assistant. You don't have to, but you could do that here if you'd like. Um, at this point, Home Assistant is going to go through and it's automatically going to find devices on your local network. It won't necessarily find all of them, but you should see a few of them. So at this point, if you want to configure any of these, you can do that here. You basically just click on whatever tile it is and go through those configuration steps and you should have it on your dashboard when you're done. There is actually a configuration for a Synology NAS. So if you want to connect directly to your Synology NAS, you can. And on your Home Assistant dashboard, you're going to see that it will have some basic information from your NAS and it will tell you if kind of everything is running properly. So you're free to do that. You're also free to connect to any other devices that you want. Once that's done, Home Assistant is fully set up. So now, like I said, you're going to have to go through and you're going to have to modify any of these settings, add any of the devices that you want, and you should have a central dashboard where you can control all of your home automation devices. So there's really no reason not to try this if you have 
uh, any home automation devices because it's free, it's open source, and it's super powerful. So try it out. I'm hoping that this video helped out, but if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.